Well, it's time now for another exclusive, and I'm about to lay bare the brazen corruption of Britain's benefits cheats, including the latest case of a fraudster who stole £44,000 worth of taxpayers' money in disability payments whilst taking part in gruelling Christmas walks dressed as an elf. Kelly Simpson said that she suffered from severe mobility issues due to a degenerative disc disease in her back. She claimed tasks such as using the bath independently, climbing stairs and putting on socks and shoes were impossible. But the Department for Work and Pensions investigators saw on social media that Simpson took part in two festive walks, each more than seven miles long, dressed as a Christmas pudding and Santa's little helper. Simpson was sentenced to 18 weeks in prison, suspended for 18 months last month. The DWP is working on recovering the money that's been stolen, but the scam bust comes as the department is spending £900 million on counter-fraud operations. With spending across three years, more trained specialists will be recruited to review millions of universal credit claims. The DWP said that its enhanced counter-fraud programme and wider benefits checks helped to prevent losses of at least £18 billion last year. But Christmas pudding Kelly wasn't the first, nor will she be the last of Britain's benefit swindlers. In 2014, Janet Curtis, then 64, pocketed 144 grand in disability benefits after saying she could barely walk, yet was caught out when fraud investigators found proof that she'd been water skiing. In 2019, Nasreen Akhtar, aged 50, was filmed dancing at a wedding despite claiming benefits worth 260 grand by saying she was too ill to work and had poor mobility. In 2017, Maribel Milligan from County Durham was jailed for three years for swindling £540,000 in disability payments by saying she couldn't move. A judge ordered her to repay £190,000 or face extra jail time. And she was rumbled because she was caught on film dancing to Michael Jackson. And Cumbrian man Neil Flyer claimed almost thirty grand in benefits for life-limiting medical conditions before secretly splashing out on drugs and a lavish lifestyle that included an action-packed holiday in Florida. Pictures on Facebook showed him on a 90-foot drop slide at an Orlando water park, water skiing and swimming with dolphins. I'm joined now by author and broadcaster Jenny Barnett. Jenny, thank you very, very much. I, we have just got so many people on the take in Britain, haven't we? Benefits Britain, Jenny. No, you're totally wrong. And I, I uh, watched your debate with Peter Tatchell. I thought it was mm. very interesting because he was saying you do not ban a protest because of a handful of idiots. We have a population of 67 and a half million. Half of that, 54.2 percent, I'm reading this, are mm. on benefits. So yeah. we're already living in a country where the government has presided over for 14 years and many millions of people, 36 millions of people... Are on benefits, Jenny. Now, yeah, that's, because that's... jobs, the whole thing has gone to pieces, as you know. But the latest... National statistics confirm that in the last year, fraud and error rates in 2023 fell to 3.6 percent. And with universal credit, that went down. Jenny, right, look, honest, honestly, are you t are you telling me, Jenny, seriously, that you think 54 percent of this country really need to be on benefits? If, yeah, oh, I think on. if they. No, are you <laughs> Hard to imagine when you are a young, affluent man working, or you're like me with a history behind me. But when we went through a difficult patch of trying to get our council tax re uh, reduced, we had a 48 page document that came in, and in the end, we threw it up in the air and said, We can't do it. Because ironically, what you didn't want to do a bit of work. <laughs> Uh, uh, that's not no. The answer is is that people don't go on benefits. Most people, fifty four percent of people, don't go on benefits if they don't have to. The handful of people, like the ones you've just cited, they make yeah. it rubbish for absolutely everybody. But not everybody is a criminal, and not everybody is taking benefits because they're swindling the Je country. Jenny, come on, come on now. Us. It is clearly far too easy to sign on in this country and to get the old gyro or whatever it is these days, it's get your benefits and all of that. You know, and it is removed. If 54% of people in this country are on benefits, right, 
What's the point? Why do we bother to get up and go to work? What are we paying our taxes for now? Highest tax versus World War II. Very you can walk into question. a Tesco's and steal whatever food you want. I don't know why any of us bother, Janet. Right. Your version of our country comes through musty eyeballs. You have, you know, I was thinking when, when uh, you phoned me up to do this, it used to be all for one and one for all. Mm. Now it's all for one and one for one because of your heroine, Margaret Thatcher, who described there's no such, uh, there is no such thing as society. But the Trussell Trust and the oh. Joseph Roundtree Foundation, this is important for you as a young, decent human oh. being. A oh. single person needs £120 a week to afford the essentials. Okay. A couple needs £200 a week. Week, universal credit claimants will be at least right. 140 pounds short and you heard the news today about pensioners you've okay. got to have 59,000 pounds Jenny we've got to we've got to go I, I get I'm sorry we're bang out of time but thank you good points made at the end all right Jenny Barnett there